Good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for, for joining me today as we discuss the G3X system. And today, specifically, we're going to be talking about the G3X Autopilot. Uh, now, for those that have uh, seen some of my previous webinars, uh, so especially the uh, GFC 500, everything you're seeing here is going to feel very, very familiar. Uh, there's good reason for that. So, um, and anybody else out there that has flown any Garmin Autopilot, whether that's a GFC 600 or anything with the G1000 running the GFC 700, everything we talk about is going to feel very, very familiar. We're going to operate these systems almost identically to one another. Now, there are always going to be some minor differences system to system, uh, but we'll cover through all of that today. Uh, there are some specifics that I'm not going to be talking about, especially as we uh, in regards to say approaches or way for interface with a third party navigator. Um, but we can still work our way through here. Uh, for the others that want to see more of that specific, I'd recommend uh, seeing our GFC 500 webinar we did earlier this year. Uh, my name is Matt Clark. I am an aviation pilot trainer here at Garmin. Been with Garmin now for five years. Uh, just about a year and a half, two years we're with our uh, aviation product support team. Uh, the remainder of that time has been with the aviation training team. So we teach everything from G3X, from the autopilots, to your retrofit panels of TXI, G500, GTN, and then into the integrated flight decks, G135000, and many, many more topics there. So, so um, outside of that, I am an active CFII. I do teach uh, here in the Kansas City area. Um, so I'm not here at Garmin. I'm usually in an airplane teaching somebody else how to run, our, run, run the aircraft and run our equipment. So, well, we got a lot of great stuff in store today, so I'm going to go ahead and let's dive on in. Now, this is our standard disclaimer here. We're trying to show you and provide best practices for installation, use, maintenance of our products. Uh, but this isn't a replacement for pilot's guides, for aircraft flight manual supplements, uh, for any service bulletins that come out that are still going to take priority there. You still want to take your time and read through uh, and have a good understanding from there. But all right, so today, as we, as we mentioned, we're going to be talking strictly about the autopilot with the G3X, how we can interface with it, what enunciations we should see. And we're going to start off with a couple terms, some, some common terms we'll see throughout this presentation. We'll go through the different autopilot controls and the different ways that we can control the G3X autopilot. Unlike other autopilots, you're set with a mode controller or say with G1000, a lot of those you're running the autopilot straight from the say, PFD, primary flight display, or your multifunction display. With G3X, you have some more options. So we'll go through all of that. We're going to go through a number of different enunciations and alerts, things that we'll want to take a little close look at and keep as part of our scan. We'll do a deep dive into our uh, the autopilot lateral modes as well as the vertical modes. Uh, we will cover the vertical nav that's built into G3X. Now, this is different than the VNAV that's in GTN. Um, for if you want to have more information, more knowledge on GTN's enhanced descent VNAV, uh, then I would say reference back to the uh, VNAV webinar we did earlier in the week. Outside of that, we are going to also run through a flight scenario starting from the uh, starting from ground, en route, climb, descent, and into including a, a simple VNAV descent to an uh, airport to our destination, all using G3X. So a lot of great stuff in store today, so let's go ahead and jump on in. Uh, as you do have any questions throughout today, uh, or if you're out in the field and you do have a question, please email us here at aviationtraining.webinar at garmin.com. That's going to come directly to the training team. We'd be more than glad to answer any questions that you have. Uh, if it is more of a tech an installation or maintenance question, then uh, I would say hit up our G3 expert team. And you can reach them at g3expert at garmin.com. They are some very, very knowledgeable individuals, and they'd be more than glad to help you as well. All right, so we're going to start with a little bit of the overview and a little bit of these few common terms. So first off, your AFCS. You'll hear me refer to that, or you may see that in some of the documentation, of AFCS. Well, that's your automatic flight control system. Big words for it's your autopilot. Right. 
Uh, next, uh, you'll hear me reference the flight director. And on this G3X display, it's actually those magenta command bars. Uh, the yellow bars are always going to be display. That's how you're determining your aircraft pitch and roll. But the flight director itself is the magenta. You can have the flight director turned on independently of the autopilot and, or independently of the servos. Uh, so if you're hand flying the aircraft, you're hand flying an approach, or just wanting to hand fly for the sake of hand flying, you can still have that reference without having the servos actually engaged. Uh, a couple others you'll hear me see, we'll see a lot are altitude or ALT, that is your altitude hold mode. We'll get more into that here in just a little bit. Uh, you'll see ALTS or altitude, uh, selected altitude capture mode, uh, ALTV of VNAV target altitude capture mode. And so when we get into the VNAV and into the scenario, I'll start talking what the difference is there and what enunciations we should expect to see. Now, hardware-wise, I'm gonna focus strictly on the pilot side of what we're gonna see in the aircraft. Uh, the first that you may have in the system, and for experimental, you've got a lot of option. Uh, for certified, most likely, we're gonna be running the GFC 500 interfaced with the G3X. And you're gonna be running most likely the GMC 507, but we have three different controllers here. The GMC 305, GMC 307, GMC 507. Uh, the 305 was the first one, and it's providing uh, all your different lateral and vertical modes, uh, as well as uh, autopilot and flight director engagement. Uh, the GMC 307 added the addition of the heading knob and altitude select knob. So if you're running other autopilots, you'll see those are, are pretty common knobs you'll see on the mode controllers. And, and now if you were to install a new G3X system and you're wanting that front-facing autopilot controller, you're gonna be running the GMC 507. This is the same mode controller that the GFC 500 uses. So it's the same hardware. So if you fly, if you have flown behind the GFC 500 and you get this unit here, you're gonna feel right at home. Uh, the only difference, the real main difference between the 307 and the 507, uh, the 507 does include the addition of the track button, and we'll get more into that here as well. Now, these are ways we can interface with the autopilot. You can see all three of them on the left side is your lateral mode. So you have, uh, you can engage heading mode, track mode, nav mode, approach modes if you have an external navigator. The right side are all your vertical modes, your indicated airspeed, uh, altitude holds, vertical speeds for climbs or descents, uh, the up and down wheel to change any of those values. We'll get into that as well here in a bit. And then in the center is the autopilot engagement section where we see we have the autopilots. All three variants have a level mode. We'll come to level mode as well. Uh, independent nodes are select buttons for both flight director as well as yaw damper if you have one installed in that in your aircraft. So same layout. Now G3X does give us another option to control the autopilot from. Now I can have that front facing control, I'll still have this, the second means to control the autopilot, and that's by selecting the AFCS status box at the top of your primary flight display. So if I don't have a front facing uh, mode controller, then I would run it strictly through the uh, G3X touch display. If I have the mode controller, I've got the option, I can run it from either. Both are going to do the exact same thing. So you've got some redundancy, which is really, really nice to have in the system. So when I press that mode, con or the uh, AFCS status box, my AFCS flight controls automatically appear. This is definitely nice to have. And it's, it's laid out in a very similar fashion here, but the very top is our autopilot engagement, where we can see we can turn autopilot, flight director, yaw damper and level mode. Uh, if our aircraft is uh, innate or has an ESP enabled or it has ESP installed, then we also have the option for ESP to turn it on, turn it off. So that is an, a nice feature there. In the middle is our lateral modes here. So we see we have heading, we have nav. If I've got track in there, I can show it'll show track as well as uh, approach modes if I have an external navigator linked in. Down at the bottom, 
my vertical modes. There are our indicated airspeed, our altitude hold, vertical speed. Uh, I have a VNAV profile set up. I have the VNAV option. And then we have a nose up, nose down. And you'll see that fluctuate around based on the vertical mode you're using. We'll get some better screenshots of that coming up here. but all controlled straight up there. So at the very top, we're gonna to go through some of the enunciations again now. Uh, if you're used to other Garmin autopilots, it's the same enunciations. G3X just puts them in a slightly different order. So on the left-hand side is our autopilot and yaw damper status. Now in other systems, uh, GFC 500 with a G5, GFC 600, or if you're running a, a a G500 or G500-600 uh, TXI with one of our autopilots, you would see that in the center. On G3X, we put it on the right hand side, or on the left hand side, excuse me. In the center is your lateral mode. So right now we can see we're in a roll mode. And on the right hand side is your vertical mode. What are we doing vertically? When we're running an autopilot, we're really using both modes simultaneously but we both, we always need to verify what those are. So we'll get into what uh, each of these different modes and enunciations are, but we're, this is where we're gonna primarily see them. And if you're running a GMC uh, 305, 307, or 507, you'll also see a light above the active mode as well. So that's another way that we can verify or cross-check which mode uh, our autopilot is in. Now we do have some additional alerts. Now these aren't necessarily specific to the autopilot. These are what's built into G3X, but we're gonna use them. We're gonna take a look at them and help us give it some additional situational awareness as we're flying along. Uh, the first here, as we see our video going, when you're within a thousand feet of your target altitude. So I have 7,000 feet selected. We just passed 6,000. We're gonna get a flash and generally speaking an oral alert. Same thing's gonna happen at 200 feet. So I pass 200 feet from my select, or within 200 of my selected altitude, I get that flash and the tone again. That's a kind of a wake up call that we're coming. Uh, coming up to altitude that we should be paying attention to our AFCS modes to make sure that they transition properly from our climb into our altitude hold. And then the fun one that every student of mine hates is if we deviate more than 200 feet from our selected altitude, is we're gonna get an oral alert and it's gonna flash yellow. So if you see that yellow, that's a caution for us that we've deviated more than 200. It's a little hard one for my students to really argue with because once it flashes, yeah, we've deviated more than 200 feet, darn. All right, so now let's go into a little bit more uh, of all the different modes. So obviously the AP is gonna turn on, it's gonna turn your autopilot on, will also turn on your flight director, and if installed, will automatically turn on your yaw damper. So the one button press can turn everything on. Uh, another button that can do almost that same thing here is our level mode, that blue level button, or in the case, if I press the level through the mode enunciations, it's gonna command my pitch to uh, zero vertical speed, and it's gonna bring my wings back to zero bank, so back to level flight. That's the whole intent of level mode. If you get yourself in trouble, you're, you get yourself into inadvertent IMC and you're having a hard time, you're figuring out which way's up, which way's down, you're getting spatial disorientation, get the aircraft level. Well, this is a great use for this button. Press the level button. You'll see laterally we're in level, vertically we're in level. The other real nice thing with this is if the autopilot's off and we're hand flying, when I press level, it'll automatically engage the autopilot and command us into level flight. So it's a one, one stop shop here for, for getting the aircraft back into level. Now normally, you do normal autopilot engagement. You, you're, you get up above, you're high enough that you're comfortable turning the autopilot on, you hit the AP button, or go into the, uh, the AFCS controls on the G3X, you hit AP on. Roll and pitch are your primary modes. Those are your, your default modes. So roll, in a sense, is keeping the aircraft level. Now, if you have a, a control wheel steering button installed in the aircraft, you can actually set a specific bank angle, anywhere from six to 20 degrees. Um, but 
if you're less than six, when you hit, then it's going to automatically default to wings level. Now, generally speaking, I don't fly, I don't fly a whole lot in roll mode. I don't typically have a reason to. Um, that's the first mode that the autopilot defaults to. Typically, I'm going to swap over to a heading mode, a track mode, or a nav mode and follow whatever appropriate course. This is just the first mode when we turn the autopilot on. If nothing else was engaged, if the flight director was off. So the next mode we're going to talk about is our heading mode. So heading is going to do exactly what it sounds like. We're going to capture and track our selected heading. Whatever we set on our heading bug, when we go into heading mode, that's where the aircraft's going to fly and track. Simple as that. Now, a nice thing with this, I can start using either that uh, heading button on the screen. I can use the heading uh, dual or knob, dual concentric knob in the corner. Or if I have one of the GMC 305 or 307s, I can use the heading knob on there. All three are going to do the same thing to set headings. It's whichever way is easier for you. There's no right or wrong way to it. Uh, as I start rolling that heading bug, it will continue following the same direction I turn that bug up to 330 degrees. Once I get past 330 degrees, now the aircraft is going to roll the opposite direction from the way I turned it. But this is great if you're hand flying procedure turns or if you're doing a, a big turn and you don't and you want to do a, a prolonged turn that's same direction, it will. Now one that we get a lot of questions on is, well, there's track mode. Why I have heading mode and I have track mode. On a GFC 500, track mode is generally used if you're not running a, an external magnetometer. Same thing can, can apply here. Most likely you have a magnetometer feeding heading information, but we still have the track option. Now the difference between heading and track is track is following a wind corrected ground track. It doesn't care what your actual heading is, it's just going to follow a consistent straight line track and correct for that wind as appropriate. So when we select track on our mode controller or through the G3X itself, we see we have a TRK enunciation for track. We notice our heading option down here changes to a track and it changes to magenta. So it means it's following a GPS ground track. And then notice what happens to our heading bug. It changes from cyan over to magenta. So magenta meaning we are running GPS track. And then same thing, if I look down here, on my uh, dual concentric knob, now that inside knob, instead of being heading, is track. Both are doing very similar things. Generally speaking, though, if ATC starts giving you a heading to fly, I'm going to fly in heading mode. They are accounting for my wind correction, so I'll fly heading. But options are available for you. If you have a magnetometer fail, for example, then you could, you could start operating this under track mode and get some fairly similar results. All right, now the one you're probably going to use the most for your lateral mode is nav mode. You hit nav on the mode controller or in your AFCS controls through this display, and it's going to track, track that selected nav source. Now, when you hit nav, it's going to give you an enunciation either of GPS, VOR, or if you're tracking a localizer, LOC, LOC. And that's the enunciation we'll expect to see. So if I was tracking a VOR, I was on green needles on my HSI, when I hit nav, then I would expect to see VOR. Now, if there, there are times where this mode will revert back to a roll mode, a number of different scenarios. Uh, one, if you are tracking a green needle and you tune a different VOR, so we're tracking one VOR, you dial in a second, kick that into the active, then our mode is automatically going to drop. It was saying, hey, I was following this radial, this VOR, something changed, I go back to roll mode. So at this point, we need to set our proper radial, re-engage nav, and then it can follow the new source. The same thing will also happen if we manually change our CDI source. So if, I, if we're on GPS and I manually change to VLOC or manually change over to green needles, that's when I would expect to see my lateral mode drop and go back into roll mode. 
Now for those running GTN or GNS that have the auto switch capability and auto switching from GPS to VLOC, then your mo lateral mode will still stay engaged, still stay coupled. It's only the manual switch where you'll see that drop. All right, so now let's go into some of the vertical modes. First one we're gonna take a look at is altitude. Now, typically I don't have to press altitude a whole lot. If I'm climbing to an altitude or descending to an altitude, then different things will happen. Uh, it, it's starting from the altitude select. We'll get into that some of that here in just a second of how that's going to transition through. But eventually the aircraft is going to come back to an altitude hold mode. Now, if I simply go in and press altitude, then what's going to happen is it's going to level out at my current indicated altitude to the nearest 10 foot. Uh, now this mode, as we said before, this mode is automatically armed if we're climbing, climbing or descending. So if I see an Alt S or Alt V in green, that altitude select or VNAV altitude, if I see a white altitude, that means whenever I get to whatever I have in my altitude selector, the aircraft will automatically level out and automatically go into an altitude hold mode. I don't have to arm it like I do on some other autopilots. So that makes my life a little bit easier. Now, if I do manually press the out button to level me off wherever I happen to be at, I can adjust it. If I use the up and down wheel on any of the GMC, the mode controllers, or if I use the higher altitude or lower altitude, I can adjust whatever, wherever I'm currently holding in 10 foot increments plus or minus 200 feet. If I need to deviate more than 200 feet, then I've got to go into one of my other altitude modes, pitch, indicated airspeed, or vertical speed mode to get me to that new, new altitude. But it is a good way to quickly, to re, um, quickly drive, correct any, uh, any altitudes in there. All right, now one you're going to use a lot, and most likely every time you use the autopilot is your ALTS, or Selected Altitude Capture Mode. You also hear me call it Altitude Target Select. So that means you're going to use this mode with any of our vertical modes, pitch mode, indicated airspeed, vertical speed, or even VNAV. Uh, and this is all going to work off of your altitude selector. So typically when I'm climbing or descending, I'm going to start by setting an altitude. So if I'm on the ground and I know I'm going to go to 3,000 feet, I'm going to start by setting my altitude selector to 3,000 feet. That's going to automatically arm a lot of these appropriate modes, the Alt-S mode for us. At that point, then I could use any of my other modes, vertical speed or indicated airspeed, whatever I need to to climb or descent. And what will happen is we start climbing, Within about 200 feet, I'll see altitude ALTS go active. I see it in green. And I'm going to see a white altitude hold, or white ALT, meaning when I get 200 feet, we're going to altitude select mode. Once I get to my selected altitude, then altitude hold can take over. This is all happening automatically. I don't have to do anything, but it's a good thing to kind of to, to verify and to keep as part of your scan when you're leveling off. All right, the first real big vertical mode here we're going to talk about is pitch mode. Now, just like we have a default mode when we engage the autopilot for lateral mode, same thing happens for the vertical mode. So when I turn the AP on without having anything else selected, the flight director's off, pitch mode is my current altitude. And typically when I engage the autopilot, if I'm climbing or descending, it's going to capture whatever my current pitch is, aircraft pitch, but that's all it's doing. It doesn't care about the airspeed, doesn't care about it, doesn't care about anything about anything else. It is simply maintaining that aircraft pitch. Now, I can use that up and down wheel on any of the mode controllers, or in this case, notice how it went to nose up or nose down. So I can use nose up or nose down, and I can adjust the pitch in 0.5 degree intervals, increments. We're still going to use this mode with with an altitude select or ALTS mode. Now, I typically don't like to climb in a pitch mode. I like climbing with indicated airspeed and like descending with vertical speed. And we're going to come back to those here in just a second. But pitch is an option for us. 
So in this case, I would start by setting my altitude in my altitude selector. I can engage the autopilot. It sets whatever aircraft pitch I'm at. Use the nose up and nose down to establish the appropriate pitch. Now the autopilot's gonna maintain that pitch until we get to our selected altitude. In which case, ALTS becomes active and then it transitions over to altitude hold automatically. And you kind of see that same thing. As I nose up, flight director commands the nose up, the aircraft starts following it. All right, next mode we're going to talk about is vertical speed or VS. So when you press vertical speed on a mode controller or you select vertical speed in the AFCS controls, it's going to match your current vertical speed. You'll then use either the nose up and nose down buttons or the nose up, nose down wheel on the mode controller, and you can fine tune your vertical speed. And this is what we'll see here. I have vertical speed active, 500, I have a down arrow showing 500 foot per minute descent. And then inside the uh, flight control or uh, AFCS controls here, next to the nose up, nose down, same thing, vertical speed, and that's my selected vertical speed rate. So a couple different ways. Once I get out of the controls, then I'd be looking to put the uh, AFCS status at the top. And you'll also see a vertical speed bug on your, vert on your vertical speed tape. So that is all controlled through either the up and down wheel or the nose up, nose down. Now you're still going to use this in conjunction with altitude select or alt uh, ALTS. So in that descent, ATC tells you to send and maintain 4,000. I would set my altitude selector first to 4,000. I would go into my controls or go to my mode controller, select a vertical speed, use the nose down to set the desired vertical speed that I wanted to send at. Which point I would see vertical speed as my active mode. I see ALTS armed, meaning it's gonna level me out at my selected altitude. And then as we've discussed already, once I get within about 200 feet, ALTS goes active. Then once I get to my altitude, ALT or altitude hold becomes the active mode. So it's all gonna transition. So start with your selector, go to your vertical mode, and watch everything transition. Now vertical speed, I like using vertical speed on a descent. Makes perfect sense to me and it makes life real easy. We do have indicated airspeed. Now I can use vertical speed in a climb, I can use indicated airspeed in a descent, I don't typically fly that way however. I like using IAS or indicated airspeed mode for a climb. Now the same things are going to apply as it did to vertical speed. When I select IAS, it's going to capture my current vertical speed. So if I take off by hand, flight director's not active, and I'm flying at VY or I get close to VY, when I engage the autopilot and I go to IAS, going to capture whatever airspeed I'm at, so it'll get me close. I can still use either the up and down wheel on our mode controllers, or I can use the slower and faster buttons, and I can change that airspeed in one knot increments. So if I had a best rate and I needed to get some altitude fairly quickly, but then say I had a cruise climb, or a climb, yeah, a cruise climb speed, then I could then low, you know, lower the nose or go faster, select a slower or faster airspeed as appropriate for that prolonged climb. All options for us here. I can use IAS in a descent, but I don't typically like to. I like to control my descent with vertical speed. I like to, to climb out using IAS. To me, it makes the most sense. Same thing as applies to vertical speed as it does to pitch mode. You're going to use this in conjunction with ALTS. So you're starting by selecting the altitude selector. You're then, so in this case, climb maintain 6,000. So I go set my uh, 6,000 to my altitude selector. I can go into IAS, then use the slower and faster to set my specific climb speed that I need. Same thing will happen. We see IAS, indicated airspeed is active. ALTS is automatically armed. Within 200 feet of my selected altitude, ALTS goes active, ALT or altitude hold becomes armed, and then when I get to my altitude, 
altitude hold becomes the active mode. And now that speed restriction or that the, the system is no longer trying to manage my airspeed, it can now accelerate to, to an appropriate cruise speed. Now we do follow standard Garmin logic when it comes to it comes to the G3X. Anything in green is an active mode. That is what your autopilot is currently doing. Anything in uh, white, uh, give me white, is an armed mode, such as ALTS. Or uh, if I'm looking on my display over here, ALT. So anything white is armed. I mean, we're waiting to get there. And if you see anything in yellow, it means something has disengaged or a mode has dropped. So if I mainly change my CDI source, I would see GPS flash at me before it goes into roll mode. Or if I manually disconnect the autopilot, whether hitting the AP disconnect on my stick or yoke, or if I hit the AP button on my uh, autopilot controls, I would see an AP flash telling me we've disengaged. If you see anything with red, like a red AP, that means we've had an abnormal autopilot disconnect. At that point, the system will start yelling at you, start giving you oral and audio alerts until you acknowledge the alert by hitting AP or once again, the autopilot disconnect. Now, every time I talk about autopilots, I always give the warning, always verify your active and your armed modes. Always know where the autopilot's trying to take you. It's taking you somewhere that you don't want or that you don't expect. You disconnect the autopilot and you hand fly the aircraft until you can troubleshoot what's going on. This applies for every single autopilot out there. Never let an autopilot take you somewhere you don't want it to. Uh, there was a, there, a crash that I always reference up in Cleveland, Ohio a number of years ago. A CJ was departing out, was trained to turn the autopilot on after takeoff. Thought he had pressed the AP button to turn it on, autopilot didn't engage. Blew through a speed constraint, blew through an altitude constraint. Um, at one point had at least 60 degrees of bank and 40 degrees nose low before the aircraft impacted the ground because the autopilot was not flying. The aircraft was doing its own thing. Unfortunately, this was a tragic accident that very easily could have been avoided. So anytime you make a change on the autopilot controls, Anytime you press a button, you change a heading, you change an altitude, uh, altitude bug, verify. Go back to your AFCS status, verify what your active and your armed modes are. Know where that system is taking you. All right, so now we're going to jump into a little bit of VNAV, or vertical nav. Now, this is not the same vertical nav if you have GTN. GTN runs the enhanced descent VNAV. What we're going to talk about here is the basic VNAV that's built within G3X itself. So if you want more information on uh, GTN's VNAV, go back to our webinar earlier in the week uh, where we were discussing VNAV and we'll, that'll be all the guidance you'll need through there. But I'm still going to follow the same pilot actions. So this is pretty consistent for me. I follow the same three steps regardless of platform. I could be in a G1000, I could be GTN, I could be G3X. I fly them all the same. So first one, we always say input or confirm the altitude constraints in your flight plan. Well, in this case, we need to verify our VNAP profile. We're going to get into that here in a second. Step two, set your altitude selector to the lowest assigned altitude in the PFD. Now, for the certified side, your altitude selector takes priority over the vertical nav descent. This is done on purpose. This matches with every other certified piece of equipment Carmen has. On the experimental side, you guys have some flexibility. You can have it deviate from that selector or you can have it match up to the certified side. It's up to you and how you configure it, but make sure you know how you have it configured so you're not surprised by what the system does. My recommendation, match up to what you see on the certified side make you roll the altitude selector. That's your last verification that you wanted to send on a VNAV descent. Step three, prior to the top of your descent, you'll need to arm VNAV. All right, so now let's go in and actually create a VNAV profile. And there's a number of ways we can get to our VNAV. Uh, one option is you go into the main menu, so hit the menu button twice, and then we're going to go in to look for that VNAV button right in the center of the display. That's one way to do it. 
that's going to take you over to the VNAV page. The other way, and I think it's a little bit faster, is you can go into your flight plan. When you go to the flight plan page, at the um, between the, the flight plan waypoints and the map, you're going to have a VNAV button in there. It's also going to take you to the same vertical nav page. Either way is the right way to do it, just whichever way makes the most sense, uh, makes the most sense for you. Now this is, for those that were used to the vertical calculator off the GNS or uh, uh, before VNAV came to GTN, this looked very similar to GTN's VNAV, or VCALC, excuse me. First, we're going to start up with our VNAV profile. The first is, how fast do we want to come down? What's our descent rate? Now, I've got 2,000 feet here. That's a pretty aggressive descent rate. But, you know, match it up to whatever, you know, the, the performance characteristics of your aircraft and how fast you want to come down. You'll have the type of constraint. So in this case, this is an altitude, you know, where you have type in the altitude that you want. You can do it above waypoint or MSL. The above waypoint is an AGL altitude. So they want, do I want 3,000 feet AGL? Do I want 3,000 feet MSL? Make the appropriate uh, selection as, as need be. We can create an, a long track offset. So if I need to be there, this is great if you're trying to get to say pattern altitude. You can set, I want to be at 1,000 feet above waypoint, and you can set, say I want three miles before, or you can set an after, or if you get a crossing restriction, hey, I need you to cross this fix at an altitude. We can do that here. We can also create a VNAV message. So when we get to the top of our descent, when we see our vertical deviation indicator center, we'll get a notice that we're approaching our VNAV profile. We'll also get the same alert that we're approaching the bottom of that descent. And then you'll also see down at the bottom, we have the estimated time to either top of descent or estimated time to the bottom of the descent. Now the other one here is you are selecting the waypoint you're referencing. Now this has to be in the flight plan. So I can't have anything else. I can't just, hey, I want to descend at 3,000 feet and have vertical guidance down. I've got to have a waypoint to work off of. So we're going to go back to our, our, our steps here. So that is essentially creating our profile. So that's that step one, inputting or confirming constraints. We confirmed our VNAV profile. We're good. Step two. Set your altitude selector to the lowest assigned or lowest desired altitude on your PFD. So you're going to take your altitude selector and roll it down to wherever we want to level the aircraft out at. And then step three, we'll arm VNAV. So now we've created the profile, whether we went through the main menu, whether we went through the, uh, the flight plan, either way is perfectly fine. But now we can go on either through the mode controller or by selecting the AFCS status box and going in and selecting VNAV. Either way, we're going to arm VNAV, and I'm going to wait and look to see that we have a white VNAV enunciation. This is what we want to see. Now, those that are used to flying with the G1000, a lot of G1000 airframes, not all of them, but a lot of them, put a time restraint or a time restriction on how early you can arm VNAV. A lot of airframes, it's a five-minute time limit. G3X, just like the GFC-5, GFC-600, does not have that limitation. So I can arm VNAV as early as I want. Uh, the previous uh, screenshot, when we were setting up our VNAV profile, we were 45, 46 minutes out from our VNAV profile. So you can arm it as early as you want. Now, one minute out from the top of your descent, you're going to see a number of things. You're going to see uh, an approaching VNAV target altitude. You're going to see your vertical deviation indicator, and here it's going to show right next to the altitude tape. I'm also going to see a vertical speed target. And this happens to be a slightly older screenshot. You'll also see a magenta altitude. So the same enunciations we see off the G5, same enunciations we see on the G1000 still apply here. One minute out, you'll get your vertical deviation indicator, vertical speed target, and VNAV target altitude. All that populate. And then when the VDI, when that magenta V, and it is a different one, if you're flying approaches, we all know it's a magenta diamond. For VNAV, it's a magenta V. 
When that centers, VNAV becomes active, and that's what we're seeing here. VNAV is active, and that's when we'll see either ALTS or ALTV. Now, if our altitude selector is set to the same altitude that we're descending to, it's going to show ALTS, or higher, I should say. If it's higher than our, our the altitude we set in our profile, we're going to see ALTS. But if we set our selector lower than that VNAV altitude, then I'm going to see ALTV, meaning it's going to level me out at the VNAV altitude and not my selected altitude. So that's your big difference between ALTS and ALTV. Now, a couple of things we need for VNAV. Uh, we need an active flight plan or a direct to a waypoint, but we have to be actively navigating to a waypoint. The autopilot needs to be in a nav mode, so we need to be following GPS guidance in a sense. We need ground speed greater than 35 knots. So if you're sitting out there doing slow flight, VNAV is not going to work for you. We need to have a little bit of ground speed. And then your altitude selector should be set to that lowest cleared altitude. Depends on how you have your G3X configured. If you're matching it up to the certified side, then you have to roll it down. If you don't, then still a strong recommendation, roll that altitude selector to the lowest assigned or lowest desired. Now, this is a this is a, a little more basic one. There's one waypoint at a time. So after I cross my waypoint, if I need to come down and do another altitude or another descent, then I need to go back in the profile and modify it as modify that as appropriate. You know, your flight path angle is all determined by that rate of descent. Uh, if you're wanting multiple constraints and you want this all managed by your navigator, that's when you need the enhanced descent VNAV. That's coming off of GTN. So GTN's enhanced descent VNAV is a multi-waypoint descent uh, barrel VNAV guidance for en route initial phases. So there you'd go in the flight plan, type all the altitude constraints directly into the flight plan for each altitude or for each uh, waypoint, and then the system can calculate that flight path angle. Uh, this is the only slide I'm going to show for the enhanced descent VNAV. If you have more more questions or want more info on enhanced descent VNAV with GTN, then uh, please uh, take a look at our VNAV webinar that we did earlier. All right, so once again, one more time, just running through all of our appropriate pilot actions. So we confirm the altitude constraints. In this case, with G3X, we confirm the profile. Step two, set your altitude selector to the lowest assigned or lowest desired altitude. Step three, arm VNAV. All right. So we're going to do a little bit of a discussion of uh, the electronic stability and protection. We're not going to go into a whole lot of depth there, especially on the experimental side. This is very, very highly customizable, whereas on the certified side, all of your electronic and stability protection is going to be referenced in the GFC 500 AFMS, or Aircraft Flight Manual Supplement. So for those guys, take a look at my GFC 500 webinar we did earlier, and you'll have more guidance and reference your uh, aircraft flight manual supplement. Now, ESP, or electronic stability and protection, is in a sense trying to keep us in a safe, protected envelope while we are hand flying the aircraft. Notice how on my PFD, I've got two magenta, or two uh, green double lines. These are my ESP limits. Now, for the experimental side, these are customizable to your aircraft. Um, on the certified side, you're going to see them typically at 45 degrees. So that's not a bad, a bad starting point for the experimental guys. When you start rolling past that, now you're going to start feeling the servos automatically engaging, trying to return you back to the safe and protected envelope. But we have pitch uh, limits, we have roll limits, we can even set airspeed limits so it's, we don't get too slow or get too fast. On the roll limit here, you can kind of see they're configurable. A standard uh, or a good starting point you'll see, especially on the certified side, is you'll start seeing them at 45 degrees. Once you roll past 45 degrees of bank, you'll notice these green air or these green lines change to yellow, and they actually come in. In this case, it's coming into a 30-degree bank. 
our 30 degree limit. So in this case, the aircraft's trying to return us inside of 30 degrees of bank. Now, once again, experimental guys, this is configurable. For the certified, these are all set from your aircraft flight manual supplement. So once you get back into that safe and protected envelope, then the servos will disengage and you'll see those green lines return back to normal. Uh, same thing happens for pitch. We can see there's ESP low, and there's an ESP high. With the ESP low, you start seeing the yellow, we're getting into a caution, and then you see the red. Now with red, we're going into the abnormal ops, and it's trying to, once again, guide our nose and get us back into a more stable, more protected envelope. Um, once again, for the experimental, these are configurable, but so based on what your your aircraft is capable of doing or what you what you want your limits to be, the certified side, these are set from the AFMS. So as I said, configurable, you can overcome by force if you need to, or you can if you want to disable the functionality temporarily, hold your autopilot disconnect. That will temporarily disable that. But if you're past that ESP limit and you let go of the autopilot disconnect, you're going to feel the servos engage and start trying to command you back into that envelope. If you're, uh, if you're wanting to do, say you're doing maneuvers um, and you know you're going to go past these limits, you can actually go into your AFCS menu and you can actually turn ESP off for that flight. So that is an option as well. But So you're not having to control the... Uh, or hold the autopilot disconnect. Either ones are an option there. Now, if ESP is active for more than 10 seconds, you'll see it more than 10 seconds within a 20 second period, now your level mode is automatically gonna engage. So if you are doing those maneuvers and you forget to disable ESP and you forget to uh, hold the autopilot disconnect, after 10 seconds, the aircraft's going to automatically go into level mode. Autopilot's going to go ahead and engage. It's going to command it to level flight. Don't be surprised by that. The system is doing exactly what it should. Here we can kind of see some pitch limits, um, what the maximum torque is at 15 degrees. In this case, it's where you're feeling the minimum torque on the uh, servos. At 25, it's giving you maximum. So the further, and this applies to the roll as well, the further you go outside of that protected envelope, the greater force you're going to feel on your controls, all trying to guide you back to level flight. All right, last little bit I have for you today is we're going to run through a scenario of how we can use the autopilot starting from the ground, working our way up into flight and into descent into an airport. For us today, we're going to be going from KMKC, that's the Kansas City Downtown Airport, via the Columbia VOR, over to Spirit of St. Louis, KSUS. So going from one side of the state to the other. For this scenario, we are running a VFR-only aircraft, so we're all, we only have G3X Touch. Uh, if you want to see scenarios with approaches and enhanced descent VNAV, go back. I would say take a look at my uh, GFC 500 webinar. We go into more detail on that. But if you're here, we're strictly running VFR. So we're going to start out. We're here. We're on the end of runway one at Kansas City downtown. ATC comes up November 1, 2, 3, Alpha Bravo. Runway one cleared for takeoff. Standard departure. So we're going to start I'm going to set my altitude selector to my initial altitude I want to climb to. So for us, we're underneath the Kansas City Class Bravo. I don't, I can't climb too high without getting clearance. So we'll start at 3,000. Pretty common altitude in this area. So I, I set my altitude to 3,000. Now if I have a, a toga button installed, a takeoff or go around button, I'm going to go ahead and press it. If I don't, I can turn my flight director on. I can set an appropriate climb pitch. Um, I can also set the heading bug. I can do all that on the ground. But if I have toga, I'm going to go ahead and select it. Press that button. That's going to automatically engage my flight director. And you notice I've selected toga. The flight director is active, but my command bars are hollow. Hollow command bars mean the flight director is on, but the autopilot servos are not engaged. And I can verify that up at my AFCS status. The autopilot is not engaged. I have takeoff mode for my lateral, which is just keeping my wings level. 
I see takeoff as my vertical, meaning it's setting me into a climb pitch, and I see ALTS is selected or is armed, meaning if I don't change anything else, if I continue flying straight at that pitch, I will level out at 3,000 feet. Now, some recommendations. On the certified side, you need to, you're going to be referencing the GFC 500 AFMS, and it tells you upon reaching 800 feet AGO, we can engage the autopilot. The experimental side, we don't have that same restriction, but it would be my recommendation you follow the same logic, same procedure there. All right, so we continue to start continuing our climb. ATC comes and says, November 1, 2, 3, Alpha Bravo, proceed on course. So off we go. We need to go now, start navigating towards the Columbia VOR. A couple things I'm going to do. First, I'm going to go ahead and change over to IAS, or indicated airspeed mode. I want to change. I don't want to necessarily fly climb pitch. I want to set a specific climb airspeed. So. Go into our mode controller, whether it's on the GMC, whether it's in the autopilot by going up here. We go into IAS mode and using the up and down wheel or using that faster or slower button, I'm going to set the, set the desired climb speed. Here, let's just say we're climbing out at 95 knots. We see I have a V speed flag at VY. I'm going to stick with that today. So if I'm already at 95 and I hit IAS, then I'm done. I don't need to do anything else. If not, Use the wheel, fine tune the airspeed as appropriate. Next, I'm going to use my direct to button down here on the bottom of the G3X display, and we're going to set direct to Columbia. So, direct to Columbia. After we set our navigation up, then I can go into nav mode. When I press nav on either controller or autopilot status, I'm going to verify it up here. And really, we need to verify everything now. So, we've engaged the autopilot. I'm tracking a GPS course guidance, so now it's tracking that direct to. I'm going to continue flying my flight plan. I'm in an IAS indicated airspeed climb at 95 knots, and I'm at an in, uh, I have ALTS, altitude target select armed, meaning it's going to level me out at 3,000 feet. This is exactly what I want to see. So we started with takeoff, we engaged the autopilot, and then we changed into some more appropriate modes to continue our flight. All right, so we're coming out of some busy airspace. We get the instruction here. November 1, 2, 3, Alpha Bravo, traffic opposite direction. Fly suggested heading 090, maintain at or below 3000. So ATC is trying to help us. There's traffic somewhere, and so we'll go ahead and comply with them. So I'm going to verify my heading bug first. So I go down. I'm going to set my heading of 090. I can verify it by looking at the display there. I can also see it on my heading bug on the HSI. I'm then going to go into heading mode. So now I can go back up. We already had 3,000 feet selected, so I'm going to let the aircraft level me out. And this is exactly what it does here. Autopilot's active. We're flying the heading mode. And where it transitioned automatically into altitude hold at 3,000 feet for me. So we're right now we're in compliance with it, what ATC is advising. And should keep us clear of the traffic target that they're they're uh, calling out for us. We continue flying. ATC comes back. November one two three Alpha Bravo traffic no factor altitude your discretion resume own navigation. So off we go. We're on our own. So we can reset the direct to. Chances are I've deviated from my GPS course. So. I reset direct to, go direct to Columbia. I'm going to re-engage, reselect nav. So I go back into our nav mode, and I'm going to verify. I see GPS set. So it's following that GPS course guidance for me, and now I can track the appropriate course. Continuing our climb out, we want to climb up, get more into a VFR climb altitude. So we're going to climb up just a little bit more. We want to climb to 3,500 feet. So we're going to start off by selecting the altitude. We set 3,500 in our altitude selector. Once we're set, then I can change into an IAS mode. Go back to IAS on the autopilot. Now that's going to set whatever current airspeed I'm at. So I can use that up and down wheel or the faster, slower buttons 
to set the specified climb speed. In this case, we're going to go back to 95 knots. That seemed to work for us before, so we're going to continue doing that. So we'll see. Now, once we've done all this, we're going to verify all of our modes. So autopilot's on. We're in GPS phone or GPS lateral track. I've got indicated airspeed climb at 95 knots with ALTS armed, leveling me out at 3,500. This is fantastic. All right, so we're going to continue on. We're going to climb a little bit higher. I don't want to stay down at 3,500 the entire route of flight. Chances are there's some better winds up above me. So we're going to do that. After we get out from the outside of the Kansas City's Class Bravo, I can see the outer shelf on the moving map. So I know I'm out from the bottom of their shelf. I want to get to my cruising altitude of 7,500. We're going to repeat the same process we just did. So we're going to start. I'll select. 7,500 as uh, my altitude my altitude pre-selector here. I'm going to go back into IAS mode. Remember, it's going to set to whatever current airspeed I'm doing using the up and down wheel or using the faster, slower buttons. We'll then set an appropriate climb speed. Could be VY. If you have a faster cruise climb speed, I'd probably set that at this point. But we're going to verify. The AP is active. Autopilot's on. G, we're following GPS course guidance, indicated airspeed at 95 knots, altitude select, ultimately leveling me off at 7,500. Now, as we get up there, uh, up to our cruising altitude, we're going to verify the autopilot. We said at 1,000 feet, we're going to get a flash on our altitude selector. 200 feet, we're going to get a flash on the altitude selector. Well, when we get within 200 feet, ALTS goes active. Altitude hold arms. As I level out a little bit more, as I actually level out at 7,500, ALTS will drop off, and altitude hold is automatically going to be is, uh, become the active mode. We can see it altitude 7,500, and we can see our airspeed is already starting to increase. We're now going into a normal cruise flight. Exactly what we want to see. Uh, we're going to move ahead a little bit here and get us a little bit closer to Columbia, a little bit further in route. And after crossing the Columbia VOR, we look out and we see there's a cloud layer at our current altitude or maybe a little bit below. We don't know how far it goes. I don't want to run the risk of trying to do VFR over the top and potentially getting stuck on top of a cloud deck when I'm a VFR only. So we're going to go ahead and make the decision. We want to descend and get under, that, under those clouds. So we're going to start with a standard vertical speed descent. So we make the decision. We're going to set our altitude down to 5,500 feet. So we're going to start. We're going to take our altitude selector. We set it to 5,500. I'm then going to go into vertical speed. I'm going to press VS, which if I'm at level flight, my vertical speed right now is zero. So I then need to use the up and down wheel or the uh, up and down buttons on the AFCS controller and set the desired vertical speed rate. In this case, I'm setting a 700 foot per minute descent rate. Nothing too terribly crazy. I see 700 feet per minute in my altitude select or my uh, AFCS status box. I also see the 700 foot vertical speed bug on my vertical speed tape. So we set our altitude. We selected the vert, uh, vertical speed, set our vertical speed mode, and then we verify. We see vertical speed, we see the bug, everything's doing what we want it to. You're going to see the same thing. As we start leveling off, we'll go to altitude select. As I get close to 5,500, then altitude hold, ALT, is going to level me out here at 5,500. Last little bit for this scenario, um, we're going to help the autopilot, let the uh, the G3X help us determine pattern altitude and get us down to an appropriate position. So I want to create a VNAV descent for pattern altitude, and I want to be there three nautical miles prior to the airfield. I don't want to get to pattern altitude right over the center of the field. I want to get there a little bit early. So let's go ahead and create our profile. So I can go into my flight plan. Uh, I can do it a number of different ways here, but we'll go in. My profile, we're going to set a 700 feet per minute. 
We're going to make sure our waypoint is set to KSUS for Spirit of St. Louis. That's the last waypoint in our flight plan. And here, our altitude. I'm setting 1,000 feet, but I'm saying above waypoint. So I could, if I knew what pattern altitude is, I could have added, I could have typed the actual pattern altitude and done an MSL. But this is a potentially easier route. I can set 1,000 feet above waypoint. It's now going to take and base and compare that to the train database loaded in G3X. So it simplifies it. We're going to set three nautical miles before. And we're going to have, we'll keep the VNAV messages on. And we can see, all right, now I'm 23 minutes out from the top of my descent. So I've got a little bit of time. So that's step one. We've ever, we created their VNAV profile. And this is a great look at the flight plan page where we have the VNAV option. So that button will take me back to that VNAV profile. So that's a quick, fast way to do that. So now, step two. We're going to set the altitude lower to uh, selector to the lowest assigned. Well, the VNAV altitude is 1,460 feet. I can't set that as an altitude selector. I can set 1,400 or I can set 1,500, depending on what I want to do. So let's take a look at these here. We can kind of see the difference between altitude select and alt V, but we'll take a look at that in a second. We so in this case, if I set it to 15, that's probably a good start point. We're going to arm VNAV. I see the white VNAV enunciation, meaning when our VDI, that guy right there, centers, we'll start our descent. So I see the altitude, VNAV altitude. I see my vertical deviation indicator, and I see my vertical speed target. All are going to show one minute prior. So this is great. So now, as we said, one minute prior is when everything's going to appear. And this is what it's going to look like. So uh, on over here, there's our VDI, vertical speed target, vertical, uh, uh, VNAV altitude. Now, the question we had from earlier here, what's the difference between ALT-S and ALT-V? So notice my altitude, my VNAV altitude is 1,460 feet. If I set my altitude selector to 1,500, I see ALTS, A-L-T-S. So that means it's going to level me out at 1,500 feet. It's going off my altitude selector. If I roll it to this right picture to 1,400 feet, notice it changes and it's going to automatically change to ALT-V, meaning it's going to level me out at the VNAV altitude of 1,460 feet. So ALTS is your altitude selector. ALT-V is the VNAV. So now, we've got the autopilot armed, we've created the profile, we've got our altitude selector set as appropriate, we descend on down, and the same thing happens. I had ALT-V, and it's telling me, here's the VNAV target altitude, altitude hold 1,460 feet, it's going to level me out, I'm perfectly at traffic pattern altitude. It's so just a way that we can use the autopilot for climbs, descents, for VNAV, for all this planning, and given us a lot of additional guidance, allowing us to focus, potentially focus our attention elsewhere in the aircraft, looking at weather ahead, whatever else we may need to. So very, very useful, very robust system for us. All right. Now, if you've liked what you've seen today, you want more training, whether it's on G3X, GTN, Garmin Pilot, G3 5000, whatever you may be, um, if you want to see more, please take a look here at flygarmin.com slash training. We offer e-learning courses on a number of products, from TXI, GTN, uh, we all, G3, 5000, weather, radar, you name it there. We also have instructor-led. Uh, we typically have been doing those in person, but we're now, with uh, uh, the chaos of COVID, we are switching over to a more virtual-based class. So we'd be running PC trainers, iPad trainers, and whatnot, and we're doing everything virtually. We can also create custom classes as well. So if you have a group of pilots or a flight department that wants custom training that's not scheduled, you can put a request in for that, and we can, we can shoot you a quote from there. So I want to thank everybody for joining me today. I know there's been a lot of information we've gone through fairly quickly here, um, but hopefully we've learned some something new and something valuable about the G3X Autopilot. 
once again, please explore here at flygarmin.com slash training. If you do have questions, like I said, please email us here at aviationtraining.webinar at garmin.com, and we'll be more than glad to answer questions that you have. So I want to thank you for your time. Everyone have a wonderful day, and fly safe.